Aloha to my Ohana family, near and far. I hope everyone is doing all right and healthy and safe and well fed. Um, I wanted to show a little project that I had been working on this week. I actually saw some pictures of it on Facebook and I thought it'd be a great camp project. We might end up doing it this summer on a rainy day, but in the meantime, while we're all probably thinking of things that we can do, I wanted to show everybody. So we're going to start with a milk container. Any size will do. Um, preferably empty, preferably used up, and then cleaned out and emptied. And I'll go step by step on how we're going to turn this into a planter for outdoor, indoor plants. I think the best thing is probably going to be to hang it but we'll see how we get on as we go so this is a smaller size you can use gallon um, I've also seen it done with a tide container let's see if I can get one okay so this size might be great these are all full but there are some examples uh, we want something with a handle there's potential here Something like that might be good. I'm going to be working with this milk container. Um, start off by washing it and peeling off the stickers if that's what you want to do. If you want, you can also try to take off the stickers here. I've done that on this side. Um, I'm not going to take off the sticker on this side because it's the back. This is going to be our face. You can see I've kind of drawn a little pencil sketch there first. You can dry it off with a paper towel or let it air dry if you want. And that's how we're going to start. So like I said before, this handle here is going to be key to making our planter. Um, here are some pictures. Of stuff that I've seen online. One thing I was thinking about is how tall do I want it to be. Probably don't need this tall of a head. Um, we can try to cut it off here. Okay, why don't we gather our supplies. I think we're gonna need scissors, our jug obviously, pencil, paint, or permanent marker, um, a box cutter might be handy to cut through the plastic and make sure that we have a adult who's comfortable using a box cutter and scissors with plastic because it can. Okay, so here we are. I've got my milk jug. It's empty. And let's make sure the lid's on tight so that nothing leaks out any extra water and things like that. So now we're going to start to make um, our cut so that our jug can be the right size. Here is a good time to ask an adult for a little bit of help because it can be tricky to cut plastic. So we're going to take our scissors and start our cut along the corner and then if you can slide the scissors in and make the cut all along the line that you've drawn around your jug. If you're finding this a bit tricky, a box cutter might be a little bit of help. Also make sure that um, you're cutting on a good surface. If you need to grab a cutting board, do that as well so we don't mess up any counters. Our little face is starting to show up. I've made some drawings in pencil already, but I thought I could draw some more with you all here. Um, Originally I had both eyes closed, but I thought it might be a little bit more fun to maybe have a winky face, so we're drawing one eye open, one eye closed, getting some eyelashes, some nice full eyebrows, because we love a full eyebrow. It's okay if it's a little bit uneven on each side, we're just gonna make a fun face that has a good expression and you don't have to worry too much just have fun with it so I was thinking it might be nice to put a little bit of 
rosy cheeks on our face here. Um, there's not a lot of room for a mouth on my jug, so I'm gonna give it some other features. How about some funny nostrils here? That might be a bit fun. Okay, I've got some permanent markers here that I'm gonna use to color in the face. And I'm just gonna color right over the pencil. Again, you know, this is just an easy, fun project, so you don't have to worry about making it look totally perfect. I am gonna pick some fun colors. I noticed that this blue kind of matches the lid of our jug here, so. Um, that's what I've chosen for the eyebrows and maybe some of the eyelashes. Let's see. Why don't we use this nice green for our eyes. I'm just, once again, I'm just going right over the pencil. Um, we can do another layer later to make it a little bit darker, but for now we'll just get the nice outline done so that we can start to see our face take shape. And how about our eyelashes? A nice purple might be fun. We'll get those drawn on now. Top and bottom on the open eye and then just on the bottom on the winky part. And what next? Um, maybe a green for the inside of our eye. What is that called? Maybe the iris, I think. Coloring in the color of the eye, and now we're going to do a little star for the people here. Um, I thought that'd be fun rather than just a little circle. And to give it a little bit of texture, or I don't know, just to make it stand out a little bit more, I put some little dots on the eyelashes. and now filling in the eyebrows a little bit just to give it a little bit of texture could be fun those little details can sometimes help you can easily overdo it though so it's a skill to know when to stop we'll see how this turns out in the end <laughs> and we're gonna add our little rosy cheeks I picked a light pink color here making it a little bit darker I might add another pink here to give it a little bit of depth in our color. And although these are permanent markers, I notice you can smudge them a little bit to blend it. So that can be fun to get multiple colors in there. And thinking about these nostrils, what do we think? Eh, it could be fun to fill them in. Let's go ahead and do it. And I'm gonna go over the lighter parts a little bit again so that we can get some darker color and it stands out a little bit. And look at that. I think that we're done. I'm happy with it. You can add any more details you want. Uh, maybe some cool jewelry or things like that. Okay, next we have a couple different options here. Um, I have a plant already in a pot, so if you don't feel like you want to replant a whole pot, you can see if your pot can fit into your jug. This one fits. It's a little bit tight, but I think if I decided to hang this jug, it would work really nicely. Um, so this is one option you can do. There it is standing up on the, the bottom of the jug. But I think I'm going to replant a pot. So I moved outside. Hello, here we are. Here's all my supplies. I've got my jug, my two little plants. I think these are called a Christmas cactus. My box cutter, some string, and some soil. So first, I would like to, to hang my little jug. So I'm gonna cut small holes in the side of it. Definitely get an adult to help with this part. It can be a little tricky and we don't want the box cutter to slip and cut any fingers or legs or toes. Um, I'm just cutting 
small little slits along the corners on the outside of the faces here so that then the string can go through them and we can have a nice hanging pot. Okay, now that we've got our string all tied together, we can start adding our soil. Um, so I filled the base of the jug with some soil already, and now I'm going to repot my plants. And we need to be careful at this point, don't break off any roots that are already there. So separate out the plant from all the soil, and make sure you've added enough soil in your jug so that your plants aren't sinking too deep into the bottom of the jug. And these ones are a little bit delicate, so I'm making sure I have a lot of soil up to the top so that they stand up very nicely. You can, you'll be able to see here, the plants are kind of going to act as the hair for our little face. So position them in a cool way so that you can have the hair sticking up in funny angles for your face. And then... You know, to give the plant a little bit more support, you can pat down the soil a little bit. And there we are. I've hung up my little jug outside using a hook in the ceiling. It balances pretty well with the string on the opposite corners there. You can also see I added a little tie-dye headband. And fun accessories like that, they're not necessary, but it can add a little flair if that's what you want to do. I have this tie-dye cloth from camp, so I wrapped it around and I thought it looked like a nice little headband. Hooray! Here we are! We did it! And our last step is cleanup. So I made a mess. Thankfully I was outside so the cleanup isn't too tricky, but after every project, make sure you take care of all the supplies that you've done. You don't want to leave it around for somebody else to step on or make it even more of a mess. So I'm gathering up my soil and again, luckily I was outside, so I'm able to sweep away the extras. Thank you everybody. Share your upcycle project with us. Tag us on Instagram or you can email. If you tag us, maybe we can share it online at Aloha Foundation or at Ahana Family Camp. Happy creating!